Rarely in my life have I heard such extraordinary giftedness among the young. I encourage you to celebrate what they do as they challenge who we are and what we do with elegance, intelligence, and extraordinary skill. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sacrificial Poets. All it took were pictures and stories of a Malawian woman to remind me I was African. That somewhere within my erased heritage and language, there are smudges of Chichewa. Flipping through photos reminds me I was once a child. Without the awareness and resources to counter the situation I was born into, can you imagine being born into a village Woo! where survival is as predictable as coin flips and wishing wells? Well, they would be too optimistic in the picture I look into. While listening to the narrator, she is poised with clandestine confidence. Masking an empty home except for a grandmother and older brother, but I saw the slave ships in her shadow. Saw manifest destiny in the tools she uses to farm. Saw more of me in her countenance than in the mirror this morning. Saw my mother in the calluses on her feet farming peppers in Lewisburg, North Carolina. Leaknish Jinu picks peanuts in Malawi, Africa. In the story I have been hearing, there is a metaphor that the people are the peanuts. Sitting beneath the surface of sympathetic soil, Malawi is full of medical consideration, but there are few who are telling their stories. Perhaps it is too much to consider them more than patients. However, there is some debate about who is harvesting in the metaphor. Is it the country or the virus? AIDS. I lost my cousin two years ago. She never thought she would fall in love and out of breath her dreams of the big city and bright lights peaked with a high-rise love affair that now cast a shadow on her flickering life. I remember watching her lie there, too weak to lift her voice, her body, too fragile to break my silence. I just looked. Couldn't say much of anything, but finally mustered up the courage to tell her, love you, cuz. You know I'll be praying for you. There are children praying in the next picture. I pray that God is listening, that there is not too much sin in their blood for miracles to penetrate. Hopefully he will not make them pay for their parents' mistakes in T-cells. You don't have to look too closely to see well that there is a motherland beaming from my follicles. My heart drums a djembe rhythm over old Negro spirituals. My skin, a combination of melanin and Malawi pigment and peanuts. It is as African as apartheid and conflict diamonds. I was American as baseball and Obama, but by the time I learned I was African, I was too black. Too present in hip hop, gospel, and R&B to notice the origin of their beats. Too busy worshiping Martin to revere Mandela, and too confused to notice that they were one in the same. Studied Harriet Tubman like scripture, but found my exodus with Garvey deciphering the smudges on an erased heritage and language. I am one in the same black skin, the red blood that runs through my veins, a part of a race and gender being harvested beneath the green leaves of a cash crop in a field of dreams. My motherland taught me I am East and West Hemisphere poured into a melting pot, seared by slavery and a hot and dry heritage that curls into a question mark right around Confederate flags and cotton gins. There are answers in the echoes of pages from the Middle Passage. Click in photos and stories spoken about Malawi and Chichewa. Click in a Malawian woman's story. Click in an African-American man's story. Click. I am a collage, a collection of frames and images. A threadbare patchwork quilt tattered and torn, waving in the wind. I hope you see me. Thank you.